Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In modern day warfare, threats come in all forms, including drones. Drones are unmanned aircraft equipped with cameras and, oftentimes, weapons. In battle, enemy drones are an unwelcome sight, as they can compromise the safety of the troops and equipment on the ground. Anti-drone systems, or drone defense, is a technology that can detect these flying threats, track them, and bring them down. The Rhine Metal Skynex truck is one such anti-drone weapon. A test shows how it can find and engage with a swarm of eight drones miles away. Even though the drones are flying in a mountainous region, at a far distance, at altitude, and at high speeds, the Skynex technology is not deceived. Radar locates the drones, and an all-powerful Swiss-made 35mm revolver cannon shoots them all down in seconds. The Skynex truck is an all-terrain vehicle. It can easily maneuver through all kinds of terrain, allowing the driver to park in protected, hard-to-reach locations to keep a lookout for any potential aerial threat. Another Rhine metal vehicle, the Sky Ranger, also has the ability to locate drones and take them out. Still, the key difference with this weapon system is that it's also made to shoot and destroy ground targets at close range. The manufacturer says the Sky Ranger is equipped with state-of-the-art search and tracking sensors, which provide 360-degree air and ground surveillance. It is also equipped with a 35mm revolver cannon. Watch as the drone gliding and attempting to avoid the bullets is easily shot down by the Sky Ranger. Land targets are no match for the power of the gun, either. Similar to the Skynex truck, the Sky Ranger is an armored vehicle that can handle any terrain. Its 6x6 wheels have the ability to handle rocky and rough turf to maneuver to tactical positions. A German company with roughly 25,000 employees Rheinmetall is a world leader in the development, design, and manufacture of artillery, mortar, and infantry systems. The company is constantly pushing the limit of what weapons can do. It recently set three world records. The 52 caliber gun of a Panzerbitza 2000 self-propelled howitzer lobbed a shell 67 kilometers. Finally, a field howitzer with a 39 caliber gun attained a range of 54 kilometers. The company produces its weapons at manufacturing centers in Germany and Switzerland, but its focus is global. Rheinmetall's mission is to provide future artillery solutions to servicemen and women across the world. In the United States, Raytheon Technologies Corporation is a dominant defense manufacturer. It is a world leader in ground-to-air weaponry against rocket attacks. The C-RAM system, which stands for Counter Rocket Artillery and Mortar, can detect and intercept the incoming rocket, artillery, and mortar rounds. In 
In Afghanistan in 2018, Raytheon workers assembled a CRAM weapon system at Kandahar Airfield. The CRAM system here protected American jets from being damaged or destroyed by enemy fire and likely saved dozens of lives. CRAM systems are also built to warn people on the ground of incoming rockets. This allows soldiers the seconds they need to take cover. There are two main technological components to the CRAM. First is the radar and radio frequency systems that help it identify an incoming threat. The second is the gun that takes out that threat. The CRAM is equipped with counter-mortar radars, firefinder radars, and multifunction radio frequency systems. These parts help it intercept communication and defend against incoming rockets. The gun on the CRAM has a more technical term. It's referred to as a land-based phalanx weapon system, or LPWS. Mounted on a semi-trailer for land-based operations, the LPWS is capable of acquiring its target and firing at a rate of 4,500 rounds per minute. Testing of the CRAM is critical to ensure the protection of airfields, bases, and ultimately, the men and women in the U.S. military. The shield of darkness at night is no match for the CRAM's anti-rocket technology. The aforementioned radar and other tracking capabilities allow it to identify incoming threats by sending out radio waves into the atmosphere. When those waves hit an object, like an incoming rocket, the CRAM knows where it is, potentially how large it is, and how fast it's going, all information it uses to take it out quickly. CRAM was operationally deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan, where its sense and warning capabilities provided timely warning of more than 2,500 rocket and mortar attacks. Its technology is not only used by the U.S. military. CRAM weapon systems, created by Raytheon, are also reported to have been purchased by Australia and the United Kingdom. The other major defense manufacturer in the U.S., Lockheed Martin, created the High Mobility Rocket System, or HIMARS. This weapon system is built for ground-to-ground -ground combat. First appearing publicly in 1993, it supports long-range combat operations. In 1996, the U.S. Army Missile Command awarded Lockheed Martin a $23.2 million contract to build four prototypes. HIMARS can fire the same family of munitions as MLRS launchers, but with one key difference, a wheeled chassis instead of tracks. Lockheed Martin says this design offers a unique shoot and scoot capability that enables soldiers to position, engage, and then rapidly relocate. Fire command! Like other weapon systems mentioned, the HIMARS takes practice to perfect. The New Hampshire Army National Guard underwent training on a HIMARS launcher in Gagetown, Canada. Thirty rockets in total were fired during the exercise, which was the culminating event for the 3rd Battalion's two-week annual training.
What makes HIMARS exceptional is its strike zone. The system can fire approximately 45 miles, while the guided missile can fire up to 170 miles. As detailed in a recent U.S. Army article, the future battlefield is unpredictable, making adaptability increasingly important. Sometimes this will require bringing the fight to a location previously thought unreachable. That's where HIMARS will shine, because it is highly transportable. So we're doing joint operations with the Army for an amphibious operation. And what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that the HIMARS artillery uh, rocket system what we're doing is that it fits on the naval vessels so we can conduct the amphibious operations uh, from island to island throughout the Indo-PACOM area. In places like the Pacific, where there are more islands than runways, the HIMARS system and its transportability is crucial. The Army can load the HIMARS onto a smaller vessel and sail that vessel to a dock where the HIMARS can unload and begin firing long-range rockets within seconds. Arguably, no other weapon system guarantees prompt and decisive action in hard-to-reach locations as this weapon system. Lockheed Martin's manufacturing of these assets also makes the U.S. a key ally. Multiple global partners operate HIMARS launchers, allowing the U.S. to combine artillery firepower in key regional positions around the world. Army and Navy personnel constantly conduct HIMARS training to test the vehicle's maintenance and prepare for future war on land or at sea. In 2021, aboard the USS New Orleans, U.S. Marines practiced obtaining the HIMARS below deck, driving it to a position where they were able to view the horizon and quickly positioning its communications and weapon system as if it was to be used immediately. These sorts of rehearsals prepared the U.S. military for real-world wartime scenarios where the system would be essential for the ship's defense. Speaking of ship defense, the Close In Weapon System, or CIWS, is on nearly every ship in the Navy's fleet. Often referred to as the Sea Whiz, the gun is positioned on boats to defend against airborne threats, like incoming jets and missiles, but also an attack by enemy boats at sea. CIWS was another gun designed by Raytheon. It consists of a cannon mounted on a swiveling base. The CIWS is equipped with radar and sensors to detect aircraft, drones, and anti-ship cruise missiles. The CIWS you see here is also used by the U.S. Coast Guard. And abroad, the British Royal Navy, the Royal Australian Navy, and the Royal Canadian Navy, among others. Because of its barrel-shaped radome and the automated nature of the operation, CIWS units are sometimes nicknamed R2-D2 after the Star Wars character. At sea, sailors aboard the amphibious assault ship USS America practice loading and firing the CIWS. These operational tests are essential to prepare for wartime defense. The capabilities of U.S. weapon systems are limitless. Whether made for ground-to-air defense, ground-to-ground, -ground, or sea-to-air, there is hardly a threat that can elude the technology currently available. However, the work is not over. Manufacturers and military engineers seek ways to improve and upgrade these different weapon systems to prepare for future threats. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.